So today I'm going to go over five simple tips to help improve your landscape photography. So these five tips are what I would consider non-technical tips. They don't rely on camera settings. They don't rely on you having a certain feature or not having a certain feature or anything like that. From your iPhone all the way up to the nicest mirrorless camera, these tips can help you improve your landscape photography. There are things that you can work on while you're out practicing, and I would consider them relatively simple. These are things about just slow down, think, and tips to apply. So there's no reason that you wouldn't be able to get out there and start practicing these right away. And I do believe you will see improvements in your landscape photography if you start working on each of these five tips when you're out photographing. So my first tip is keep it simple. When you're setting up your image, make sure people understand what your subject is. What do you want them to be looking at? A lot of times I'll see pictures where there's all these competing elements. There's this multiple trees and no certain order. So it's hard to tell what am I supposed to be looking at? If you're at a waterfall scene, there's a nice waterfall, but then there's something coming in from the side of the frame that's distracting me, pulling my eyes away. Like, well, that's nice, but what's this? That's the key to keeping it simple is one, identify what is the subject? What do you want people to look at? What story is it telling? Make sure you've got it clearly identified. Once you have that composed in your frame so it's obvious what the subject is, then start looking around for distractions. Take the time back of the camera and look around the edges of the frame. Is there a tree limb coming in? Is there an odd branch? Is there a bush that's coming up from the, the lower part of the frame and getting into it? And is it going to cause someone to look away and be distracted? So watch those foreground elements. Watch those things on the side. Watch what's actually in the main composition of your scene. Is there too much in it? A lot of times keeping it simple is really removing the distractions and that's what will make a more powerful image. So that's my first tip. When you're out there, keep it simple. Clearly identify your subject, make sure your composition shows that subject, and then watch for distractions that might be averting people's eyes or distracting them from what you want them to look at. You want people pulled into your image and it's easier to do that if you keep things simple, minimize the distractions, and that will help you improve your images over time. Okay, the second tip is when you arrive at a scene, look around. So when you first arrive at a spot, a lot of times you'll be drawn in and attracted to this one composition and you think that's the one that to go with. I strongly encourage you to take your time, don't necessarily get your camera and tripod out of the bag and all set up, and just walk around. Look around. Look at it from different angles. Look at it from different heights. Another little handy tip when you're looking around is to get your phone out and you can sort of frame it up like this. It gives you an idea of what it would look like through the camera without getting all that set up. Because once you start setting up your tripod and your camera, you get much less likely to move around a lot. So I highly encourage you when you reach a spot, take the time, look around, look for an interesting composition, look for something a little different. Keep the first tip in mind of keep it simple and what angle best keeps your frame simple really highlights your subject. Those are the things to keep an eye out for. Which one helps remove the distractions from, you know, your image and your picture and things like that. Play with your camera height. That once you start to get your composition in mind, play with it. Is it high up and shooting down sort of cool? Is down low with getting some interesting foreground elements sort of cool? You know, is it normal eye level view that's sort of cool? Play with portrait mode versus landscape mode while you're there and looking at your compositions. Which one works better? Is it better like this or is it better like that? Those are the things to do. Really take that time when you arrive at a scene to look around absorb it, think about the story you want to tell, and really work that shot to get the strongest composition you can. And my third tip is plan your trip. Spur of the moment photography trips are fun. You know, maybe you're heading out to a park real quick, you got some extra time, and you head out and go. And you do still want to keep doing that because getting out and practicing your photography is always a good thing. However, to get really strong shots, make sure to plan your trip. And that could be whether it's someplace local or someplace you're traveling to, whether it be, you know, 45 minutes away, six hours away. Really plan your trip out so that you make the most use of your time. This is one I actually struggle with a lot and need to remind myself of. I can't tell you how many times I arrived to a spot later than I should. I should have gotten there an extra hour early so I had more time to think about compositions instead of trying to rush through the light. I even did a video once on how not to photograph a sunset when I was all the way across the country in the southwest. Showed up to photograph a sunset in Arizona. Showed up later than I should have. Got stuck in a line of cars. Got to the spot I wanted to be at. I had to default to one of my old favorites just because I hadn't allowed enough time to really scout out a new and interesting composition. You know, I walked away with some interesting shots, but if I'd have taken that extra time to really plan it out, arrive early, I could have come away with much stronger images than I did. And that was on a case where I was all the way across the country. It's very hard to repeat that. So even locally, when I go to, you know, one of my local favorite areas, Hocking Hills, the more I plan and the more I think about which waterfall I want to hit first, at what time, how do I want to get there, that all helps my 
photographs from that day be much stronger. So take those times to plan those trips. And planning means making sure you know the trail to get to where you want to go. Check out Instagram, look at other people's photos for maybe a little bit of inspiration. Make sure you're choosing the spot you want to go to. Maybe you can only visit one spot under the ideal conditions, so you might want to compare which spot should you go to first so you're there at the best light. If it's a spot that's new to you, tack on an extra hour, get there an hour early so that you can really wander around so that when the light really does get good, you sort of have your shot lined up as opposed to showing up just as the light is getting good and now you're scurrying around trying to find the right shot before the light fades. So really, take that time, plan your shot, and I think you'll find that your images start to improve as you think more consciously about that. Again, don't let that stop you from going on the spur of the moment. It's good to get out there on a whim too, but if you want to see continued improvement in your landscape photography, take that time to plan your shot, plan your visit, and things will just be more relaxed, more calm, and you'll have more time to get what you want. My fourth tip is study other photographs. Now this one I do want to put a disclaimer on. Sometimes, especially as a new photographer, even as an experienced photographer, because I think to a degree we all experience some form of imposter syndrome and am I good enough? If, as you're looking at other photographs, you find yourself getting demoralized or like my work will never be this good, then it might be good to take a step back or at least reduce the number of photographs you consume as you study them and look at them. This is, this tip is not to get you discouraged. It's to help you see what other photographers see. How do they compose their image? How do they work with the light? How do they work with foreground objects? Do they keep it simple? And how do they do that? Just really paying attention to those things. And when I say study other people's photographs, this doesn't mean just scroll through Instagram, just scrolling mindlessly. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Like that one. That's cool. Take some time and really just find an image that really attracted you and just take like five minutes and study it. Just sit there, look at it, open it up big. If you got it on the computer, put it up big screen and really think about it. Where is your eye drawn? Why is it drawn there? Is it because it's just a prominent object or is there something with the lighting, how it's shaded and how it looks that pulls your eye in? Is there a leading line? Is it where it's centered in the image? Really take that time to see what your eye is attracted to, study it and try to figure out beyond just, oh, I like this image, why you like that image. As you start to do that, you'll see what other photographers are doing to help really pull you into an image and it can help inform how you photograph things. Again, this should be a conscious effort. It shouldn't just be rolling and scrolling through Instagram. You know, don't let this one demoralize you or disenfranchise you from getting out there and taking pictures. But I do think it's worth studying other photographers. Maybe you turn it into a habit where you just go to photography exhibits in a museum or something like that and save that time for that. I know I sometimes take a break from social media to not be looking at all the images out there. But still, a trip to the museum can be worthwhile to look at some of the masters, the people that made it into galleries. And really just take your time, absorb it, study it, and see what's working for them and start to incorporate some of those elements into your photography. And the fifth and final tip for today is get out there and photograph more. The practice is what really will improve your photography the most. We can sit here and we can watch YouTube videos, we can read books, we can read magazine articles, we can participate in various social media forums about photography, and we can talk about photography all the time. But what is really going to make the difference is taking those things you've read about, learned about, looked at, and going out with your camera and practicing. And that means practicing not only in your sunrise and sunset, perfect light conditions, but go out in the middle of the day and practice. There will be things to photograph and you will learn more about your camera and you will learn more about composition. The best way to improve is to actually get out there and do it. It's so easy to fall into, I'm reading about photography online, I must be getting better. When in reality is you've got to take that stuff you read about, you watch and head out and actually practice it. So my fifth and final tip is to get out there and photograph more. That practice will have a direct impact on making your landscape photography better. I think these five tips I've talked about today will help improve your photography. I've purposely kept it away from camera settings and the technical. We'll do some tips on technical tricks that'll help improve your photography in the future. But for these tips, these were supposed to be simple tips, easy tips to start practicing, and you could start using them whether you're using an iPhone for your photography all the way up to the nicest mirrorless camera. These are things I think, if you practice, will help improve your landscape photography. If you like today's video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see other landscape photography content from me in the future, such as tips, tricks, mini gear reviews, advice like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any content from me in the future. And thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.